As a clinician, my main objective in the rehabilitation of an individual would always be to first of all maximize their full potential for functional independence. The research that has been done internationally suggests that around 60% of full-time manual wheelchair users will develop shoulder pain. All aspects of daily life will suffer and as the level of independence decreases, so will the quality of life itself. Well, wheelchair propulsion is a repetitive task which is normally undertaken in less than optimal posture. This might be a contributing factor to the increased prevalence of shoulder and wrist pain in manual wheelchair users and also may result in a less than optimal outcome after treatment. During traditional wheelchair propulsion, the glenohumeral joint or shoulder joint goes into extension abduction and internal rotation, which might result in the narrowing of the space at the shoulder joint. Muscles and tendons in the area can be predisposed to microtrauma because of this narrowing of the space, which may require surgical or non-surgical treatment. If surgery is required, this is much more costly to the health service than for a non-wheelchair user. The length of hospitalization is much longer as the individual will need total care for the duration of the recovery period. And in order to have some degree of independent mobility, some form of powered mobility will have to be provided in the short term. With respect to wrist pain, the prevalence of carpal tunnel syndrome in spinal cord injured patients has been reported somewhere between 50 and 60 percent. The repetitive nature of hand movement during manual wheelchair propulsion which results in the joints going through the extreme ranges can be a contributing factor to the high prevalence of carpal tunnel syndrome in manual wheelchair users. Compared to standard traditional ring propelled wheelchairs, liver based propelled wheelchairs are associated with a reduced heart rate reduced oxygen uptake and reduced energy expenditure during propulsion. This means that new drive has the potential to allow people to function at a level at which they were not able to function before. New drive works on the principle of mechanical advantage. Mechanical advantage is the ratio of output and input force. Lever-based systems for wheelchair propulsion can potentially provide a higher effective force that is provided by the hand force applied at a longer moment arm. Mechanical efficiency, on the other hand, is the ratio of power output and aerobic energy released during propulsion. Lever-based systems provide a higher mechanical efficiency compared to traditional standard wheelchairs. Manual wheelchair users might have a reduced level of cardiorespiratory function. Older people might also have a reduced level of muscle strength, which means that they might specifically benefit from new drive. The use of larger muscle mass and a simple pattern of flexion extension during propulsion, plus the fact that the sitting posture is better, might all postpone fatigue and allow people to proper wheelchair for a longer duration. In my opinion, the potential health benefits of new drive are also directly related to financial benefits. By promoting a more independent lifestyle and preventing musculoskeletal degradation in the long term, the users of new drive might remain active for longer, reduce dependency on carers, and reduce reliance on costly forms of powered mobility. So it's not only in the interest of the individual, but also much more cost-effective for society as a whole to minimize the risk of these overuse injuries. By making available the most appropriate method of wheelchair propulsion, whether that be a lightweight manual wheelchair or a manual wheelchair with assistive technologies to reduce the effort of propulsion. The overall effect is that lever drive propulsion systems, such as new drive, have the potential to significantly reduce the cost of healthcare in the long term. But it must be remembered that these technologies are not standalone solutions. They need to be combined with targeted strengthening of the shoulder girdle, optimal postural alignment, the teaching of appropriate transfer techniques, and adequate wheelchair skills training.